Drunken Piper. This is a work in progress on the guitar. It was composed in the 19th century as a Highland bagpipe tune. And it's uh, associated with the dance, um, the reel of the uh, 51st Highland. Something like that. Let's see, I wrote this down. Reel of the 51st Division. It's got quite a story. Maybe I'll tell you tell you later. Anyway, I'm uh, my main struggle with this is not speeding up when I get to the third part, and um, it's composed as a um, march. But I hear it played as a reel a lot, and as I said, danced as a reel. Um, standard version, two parts, something like this. and fiddle player Donald McClellan play very very detailed four-part version it's got so many beautiful things I'm trying to learn them I can't do it yet but um, I'm also trying to play this as guitar music so for instance um, where I might start the, the, the fiddle would go I might go strings. So to begin with, there's a statement before the tune begins. Yeah. It says Scottish music is about to take place.
us a speed up. so many ways to do it. So, for instance, a we put the snap here. But um, snap means um, down, up, short, long. Or see. This nice slur there. So another thing, this tune has no major or minor third. It has no third at all. The mode I know there are some uh, musicians um, who are playing this tune like this. I think it, it um, loses its power. Um, I don't know. It doesn't sound right to me. Now I can use the octaves or two different G's. passage. Where's that notation? Here. Um. But in the ornament, there's a C sharp. So there's a little hint. It's the, um, I don't know, the spice of a third. Now, in the second part, he has a wonderful ending. Here it comes. Wow. Gorgeous. I've ch 
tried to finger that different ways. In isolation, this comes out best. But in context, the first position works fine. Sounds a little a eh, little twangy um, on its own, but somehow I'm able to get that B string to be sweet. Now the part where I speed up, the third part. Arpeggio, right? Not quite. Well, I don't know what to call it. It's what it is. That's arpeggio. And then put a little bluegrass guitar in here. Instead of and then it goes we can do this it's beautiful it changes the color hard uh, conceptually Oh yeah. No G. This, this tune is, is associated with a particular dance, and let me, I made some notes here so I don't get it wrong. Yeah, there was a lieutenant in the Second World War in the 7th Battalion of the 51st Highland Division of the British Army that was captured by the Germans and marched from France to Austria. That's a long walk. 
and to distract himself from the discomfort and humiliation. Jimmy Atkinson was his name. He just reviewed all these Highland Pipe tunes that he knew, and he started creating some dance steps. And he, he created a dance, and when they got to the prison camp, he taught it to some of the soldiers, and they danced to it by whistling whatever tune they were they were doing it to. I don't. It might have been to the Jumpin' Piper or something else. Um, and their captors thought they were crazy, but they didn't object. Eventually, I, an accordion was found. Anyway, um, the dance steps were written <laughs> written down and notated with numbers and letters and somehow smuggled out of the camp and sent to various dancers and musicians in Scotland. Most of these were intercepted by the Germans who thought it was a secret code and they could not, they couldn't break the code. They had no idea what it was. But at least one of them reached Scotland and eventually the dance steps were aligned with, with this tune with the Junkin Piper. Um, it was composed by Alexander MacLeod sometime in the 19th century. That's all I know. Um, well, there's, there's a set of Gaelic words um, that um, seems to be sung both in Scotland and Cape Breton, any Canada, wherever. Um, same words. Uh, I don't know them, but I've heard them plenty. In fact, I heard this tune first as, as mouth music. Anyway, hope you got something out of this um, messy playing. <laughs>